Are you over 30? I've got some bad news for you. Chances are good you've already begun losing muscle. Muscle aging is a result of decreased number of muscle stem cells, mitochondrial dysfunction, a decline in protein quality and turnover, and hormonal deregulation. Loss of muscle mass is associated with weakness, which can make daily activities like climbing stairs or even getting up from a chair difficult. This leads to inactivity, which contributes to muscle loss. Sedentary people enter a vicious cycle that leads to falls, loss of independence, and premature death. The good news is that exercise can stave off and even reverse muscle loss and weakness. Physical activity promotes mitochondrial health, increased protein turnover, and restores level of signaling molecules involved in muscle function. Exercise prevents or reverses many of these age-related changes. Muscle is the most abundant tissue in the average human body, accounting for 30 to 40% of its total mass. Muscle is not only critical for moving and breathing, but also for glucose, lipid, and amino acid homeostasis. The age-associated loss of muscle mass and quality thus contributes to the general metabolic dysfunction commonly seen in elderly patients. MSculpt is an excellent way to build muscle even in sedentary people. For example, I have several patients with bad backs. They are unable to do sit-ups. However, MSculpt for their core has been transformational for their overall physical conditioning and their chronic back pain. The great Mike Tyson once said, I love women. I mean, my mother was a woman. I love women too, but my practice is limited to men. I am Dr. Judson Brandeis, and my office is in San Ramon, California. I help men feel better, look better, and have better physical intimacy. MSculpt and Mcella are essential tools in this endeavor. First, I would like to discuss a brief history of Mcella and Msculpt. The early versions of the Mcella chair were made of Valerian steel. As you can see here, Daenerys Targaryen is on one of the earliest versions of the Mcella chair. The mother of dragons sustained serious burns and trauma while giving birth to her three baby dragons. Mcella was able to significantly improve her incontinence in time to capture and eventually rule Marine. Later versions of the Mcella chair are visible in this antique photograph. You can see a much younger Dr. Brian Kinney working on an earlier prototype. Notice at that time he had a full head of hair. It's a little known fact that Dr. Nikola Tesla also contributed to the development of the Mcella chair, developing the Tesla coil in alternating current electricity as well as the rotating magnetic field. Unfortunately, he was unable to miniaturize his invention. Now that we are familiar with the history of Msculpt, Mcella, and the high intensity focused electromagnetic wave technology, I would like to introduce you to our first annual BTL Triathlon. Take it away. Welcome to the first BTL Triathlon. We're waiting for Dr. Brandeis. And here he is. Thirty-five percent. Yep. 
Now we're up to 50%. Quickly up to 60%. Now what I tell my patients is that you have to breathe. Breathe in. Now I position the paddles just below the ribs. And I tell my patients, especially my larger patients, that they can bring the paddles out towards the obliques to get more of an oblique workout. Or bring it a little bit lower to get a lower abdominal workout. All right, first leg done. So you might be interested in how the technology actually works. In order to initiate movement, an impulse is generated in the primary motor cortex in our brain. This impulse is transmitted through the cortical spinal tract and down the spinal cord where the primary motor neuron synapses with a secondary motor neuron. A nerve impulse is called an action potential, which results in depolarization of the nerve due to the release of acetylcholine, which causes an influx of sodium ions and an efflux of potassium ions, which creates an ionic gradient that is then propagated along a nerve fiber to the terminal end of a nerve which is located at the muscle fiber. The nerve action potential propagates to the neuromuscular junction, which then results in contraction of the sarcomere of the muscle. A number of other factors influence how well this occurs, including the circulatory system that brings oxygen, the extracellular matrix which protects the muscle, the cytoskeleton which supports the muscle, and the mitochondria which provide energy. Working against the strength of muscular contraction are oxidative stress and inflammation. The diagram on the right is simply to show you that it is far more complicated than even the complex explanation that I just gave you. Nerves work through electrical impulses generated through ionic gradients. Nerves stimulate muscle to contract through depolarization of cellular membranes which then result in a contraction of the muscular fibers. The strengthening of muscle is based on the amount and duration of exercise over time. Muscles are made of fibers that contain hundreds of organelles called myofibrils. Myofibrils have two layers of protein filaments, a thick layer called myosin and a thin layer called actin. When nerves contract, the actin filaments slide past the myosin filaments, resulting in contraction of an individual sarcomere, which generates active force. Muscular contraction occurs when muscle fibers are shorter. Conversely, muscle fibers get longer with relaxation. The goal of exercise is to grow big muscles. This occurs through two mechanisms, hyperplasia, which is making more muscle cells, and hypertrophy, which is making existing muscle cells bigger. What actually occurs is a combination of both hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Well, it looks like Dr. Brandeis is done with M-Sculpt for his abdominal muscles, and he has now M-Sculpt on his triceps. Let's tune into the action. The next event is arms in our BTL triathlon. The first part of arms are the triceps. And I hate doing triceps in the gym. So I am so appreciative that BTL came up with M scope for arms. My triceps have improved in size and strength. Because muscles contract in response to electrical impulses, if I place a positive and negative electrode on either side of the muscle, 
and run an electrical current through the skin to the nerves controlling muscles, I can force the muscle to contract. These contractions tend to be painful because the electrical currents generate heat and trigger pain receptors. In addition, this typically affects only muscle without any involvement of the adipose tissue, also known as fat. This image is another way to look at direct current, which finds the shortest path between two electrodes. Most of the energy from direct current concentrates in the superficial layers like the skin and subcutaneous fat, and only a small part of it reaches the muscle. Because of this, the intensity of contraction is limited due to pain and the risk of burns. What is high intensity focused electromagnetic energy? The three properties of electromagnetic waves are the number of waves per second, also known as the frequency, the wavelength expressed in meters, and the photon energy. A 500 terahertz wave would be visible light. A 15 megahertz wave would be a radio frequency wave, and a 15 kilohertz wave would be a very low frequency HIFEM wave. HIFEM creates a secondary current induced by strong magnetic fields that bypass the skin. The peak of the current density is in the muscle, which allows for extremely intense stimulation of the muscle fibers. HIFEM creates an alternating electrical field at the site of the muscle and fat and not the skin. This limits the stimulation of pain receptors and therefore does not cause pain. There are two other important benefits of electromagnetic currents, which are the generation of supermaximal contractions and the utilization of fat as an energy source. But before we go there, let's check in with Dr. Brandeis. All right, we're in the second half of the second event in the BTL triathlon. Biceps. <laughs> this is my favorite event, the <laughs> bicep. It's made a big difference though. I've gone from being able to curl 40 pounds five times to 40 pounds 10 times since I started doing the bicep. Next, let's talk about supermaximal muscular contractions. It's important to understand the limits of muscular contraction. When you go to the gym and have your best workout ever, you likely utilized 60% of your muscle fibers. Elite athletes may be able to increase this by up to 80%. Evolutionary forces prevent us from overexerting our muscles to prevent injury. If a caveman overextended a muscle and tore the tendon off the bone, he would no longer be able to hunt and survive and therefore would not be able to procreate. However, muscles can generate more force under extreme conditions, which is why we hear stories of ordinary people lifting cars or other feats of strength. If you're out hiking and get caught under a boulder in a rock slide, you might as well take a chance on tearing a tendon off the bone if your alternative is to be permanently trapped. A massive surge of adrenaline can allow you to recruit a higher percentage of your muscle fibers in an effort to survive. The point is that muscles are capable of generating higher levels of force under extreme circumstances. Currently, the muscles that can be strengthened with M-Sculpt include biceps, triceps, abdominal wall, gluteus, or buttock muscles, and the calves. This slide shows a comparison of the force of voluntary versus supermaximal contractions. The M-Sculpt is able to generate significantly more force resulting in the growth of muscle. On a cellular level, HIFEM produces contractions that cause micro injuries to muscle, which then trigger muscular growth. 
the upper images show an increase in muscular density on muscle biopsy before and after M-Sculpt. By using HIFEM technology that generates an electromagnetic alternating current at the subcutaneous muscle and fat, four weekly sessions of M-Sculpt can hypertrophy or grow muscle 16% and reduce the local fat layer 19%. Studies utilizing ultrasound, CAT scan, and MRI technology have shown that the beneficial effects to muscle volume last as long as six months. This study by Dr. Kinney used four weekly abdominal M-sculpt treatments, each lasting 28 minutes. You can see from the MRI images that there is a reduction in subcutaneous fat and an increase in the thickness of the abdominal rectus muscle. A similar study on the gluteus or buttock muscle used patient satisfaction as a metric to measure beneficial results because it's more difficult to measure the thickness of the buttock muscle. There was a significant improvement in patient satisfaction in the 75 patients who participated in the study. This interesting study compared pain scores using direct electrical stimulation versus HIFEM. All patients reported a very significantly lower pain score for magnetic versus direct electrical stimulation. Speaking of pain, let's check in with Dr. Brandeis as he transitions from biceps to pelvis. Oh, my last event and my favorite, Mcella. Let's get started. Okay, make sure your patients are centered right over the middle of the kettle. This is the two Tesla magnet that you're basically sitting on, creating electromagnetic fields. Now, there's protocol one, that's for women. Protocol two was made for men. And the reason it was made for men is because it goes deeper, because women's anatomy is a lot lower. You don't have to go very deep, very superficial you need to go. Whereas for men, the, the, the electromagnetic field needs to go deeper. So it hits the bladder and the bladder neck, the prostate, the pelvic floor, and the base of the penis. So that you urinate better, you have better prostate function, and you have better blood flow and nerve function to the base of the penis. All right, I'm going to crank it up to 80%. I got the newest version of Journal of Sexual Medicine. I'm just going to do some reading for about 28 minutes, and I'll see you at the finish line. According to a 2016 Lancet study, obese people now outnumber the underweight population for the first time in global history making it critically important that we learn how to burn fat. During physical activity, muscles need energy to produce contractions. The energy is derived primarily from ATP and secondarily from creatine phosphate and glycogen to fuel the muscles. When these deplete, the body's catabolic processes take place in the form of lipolysis, the breakdown of lipids into free fatty acids and glycerol. These released molecules usually act as an energy source for the needed muscle activity and body metabolism. During an M-sculpt treatment, the muscles contract to supermaximal levels. Signals are sent to the brain that an extreme amount of energy is going to be needed to supply these contractions and the release of epinephrine is acutely increased. This results in an extreme catabolic reaction and supermaximal lipolysis, which in turn brings about a dramatic release of free fatty acids. When the amount of released free fatty acid exceeds normal levels, they start accumulating intracellularly in surrounding adipocytes and eventually lead to their dysfunction. This catabolic and supermaximal lipolysis effect occurs mostly in the area in close proximity to the actual contracting muscles due to increased adipose tissue blood flow and paracrine substances released from the contracting muscles. 
This principle of cell apoptosis induced by an overflow of free fatty acids has been previously observed and demonstrated in numerous research studies. The graphs on this slide show an increase in programmed cell death, otherwise known as apoptosis, following mSculpt. This is demonstrated through the decline in pH, increase in free fatty acids, and evidence of a breakdown on histology. The result is an approximately 20% reduction in local subcutaneous fat seen on ultrasound, CT scan, and MRI imaging. HIFEM reduces fat by inducing an exaggerating metabolic reaction, creating excessive accumulation of free fatty acids. Fat cells become intoxicated and initiate programmed cell death. To summarize what we have learned, high intensity focused electromagnetic technology generates muscular contractions that go far beyond what a person could accomplish using their nervous system. MSculpt creates supramuscular contractions that result in hypertrophy or growth of muscle and lipolysis or the burning of fat. In the studies of four 30-minute treatments of the abdominal wall, there was a 19% reduction in fat and a 16% growth of muscle that lasted at least six months. A reduction in rectus diastasis and waist circumference also occurred. Now let's discuss the role of M. Cella for men. M. Cella is non-invasive electromagnetic stimulation of the pelvic floor musculature for the purpose of rehabilitating weak pelvic muscles and the restoration of neuromuscular control for the treatment of incontinence. Now, unless you've had prostate surgery, it's unlikely that you have significant incontinence. However, look at the additional side effects. No side effects are usually bad. However, a temporary increase in local circulation would bring blood flow to the penis. And increased sensitivity during intercourse does not usually count as a bad side effect. Let us look at sagittal pelvic anatomy in men. If you focus on the perineum, which is the space between the posterior scrotum and the anterior anus, and you go below the skin, what you find is the base of the penis with the internal pudendal artery and nerve, the prostate with the seminal vesicles, the bladder neck, and the base of the bladder. The structures are all critically important to a man's health, especially with age. Now, Mcella has two protocols. Protocol 1 is most appropriate for women who typically have superficial anatomy. Protocol 2 is for men who have deeper anatomy. Protocol 2 is for pelvic muscle strengthening and blood flow enhancement. Now, this Taiwanese gentleman was part of the original study group. At Brandeis MD, we are performing some of the first clinical research studies on men using protocol 2. However, women who have undergone MCELA have improvement in both sexual and urinary function. This study out of Moscow and Prague shows that treatment results in substantial restoration of pelvic floor muscle strength. Speaking of strength, it looks like Dr. Brandeis has completed the third leg of the BTL triathlon. Let's check in with him now. And here he comes. Oh, oh. you know, I need to thank my family and my friends and all the people at Brandeis MD and everyone at BTL for this great honor. Thank you all very much. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you have a great day. Stay safe and healthy. This is Dr. Judson Brandeis coming to you from Brandeis MD in San Ramon, California. This video has been brought to you by MSculpt Muscle Strengthening for Men and MSella for Men. I am board certified urologist, Dr. Judson Brandeis, thanking you for your attention. 
I specialize in men's sexual medicine, cosmetic urology, and male rejuvenation in San Ramon, California. If you are interested in any of our five clinical research studies, please go to BrandeisMD.com. If you're interested in our supplements, including a firm nitric oxide booster, prelong for premature ejaculation, support for testosterone boosting, and spunk for prostate health, please visit affirmscience.com. I would like to thank BTL for their support. See you next year at the second annual BTL Triathlon.